Let's look at the benefits of collecting data and how it's done and why collecting data is a big thing for most companies. With the connected products comes the possibility to gather and analyze information from the devices. The data from a device can provide valuable input when, for example, troubleshooting or identifying where a device is located. The data might also be used to predict and schedule maintenance needs, as well as finding weaknesses in the product that can be adjusted in the production process. Let's break it down into the pieces most commonly used in an IoT solution from the perspective of Telenor IoT. An IoT device can come in many shapes and forms, and the type of device used is most often dependent on the type of environment it's deployed in. The demands and requirements for a device in a vehicle is more likely to have to withstand vibration, dirt and possibly contamination from engine fluids. Whereas a device installed in something stationary, such as a freezer, only has to withstand cold temperatures. To this we add sensors, which also varies depending on what the service or product is supposed to measure or provide. It can be everything from temperature, humidity, position, speed, to altitude, blood pressure, your pulse, or a trigger that a door is opened or closed. Almost anything can be measured or monitored and therefore used in an IoT solution. Now, this data must be transferred, so we need to add connectivity. If the devices are spread over larger areas, nationwide or even globally, it's usually mobile communication that is preferred. A roaming service in mobile networks gives the device the freedom to move almost anywhere, and in addition, it has the possibility to switch between networks to get the best performance and reliability. A stationary device in a building doesn't necessarily need mobile communication. Instead, they could be using a Wi-Fi network or even Bluetooth, depending on how often they need to communicate. It's also possible to combine these for an even more robust service with redundancy. The third part that for sure is an important one is security. This means that we must make sure that our devices can only be reached by those who are authorized. We should probably add encryption to our way of communicating, and we also have to make sure that we store our data safely. There are a number of ways to achieve all this, but one common piece in this puzzle is to add a VPN, a virtual private network. By adding this, we provide the device with a safe way of communicating to whatever backend system is waiting for the data. And we make it hard for anyone who might be trying to access our devices without permission. All the data from our devices has arrived in the company backend system where it's stored and ready to be processed. Now we need to extract and make use of it. Depending on the service, this could be in an app to an end user of a vehicle, it can be a service center monitoring a service for its customer, or an industrial site that needs to keep track of every single step of the production process. Thank you for attending this introductional course to IoT. You are now taking your first steps to become an IoT expert. We have gone through the basics of an IoT solution and how it can be applied in a business model. We have also looked into the different phases that can make up an IoT journey and how it may look in different use cases. The opportunities to extract value from connected devices and data is unlimited and more is still to come in the future. We hope that you have learned a few things about the concept that is IoT.